Also coming up tonight, we show you how the ballot for the supreme job, the presidency, plays out. Who's in, who's out, and who's where on the ballot order. Also coming up, tops in our stories at this hour. Please and democracy have at a stalemate over whether or not that demonstration against illegal mining will take place. Again, this is Ghana Tonight. As always, you can get interactive with us on our socials. We are streaming live on Facebook and on YouTube at TV3 Ghana. And when you get interactive with us, use the hashtag Ghana Tonight so we see your comment quickly. But let's go through the process. First is Ghana Brief. Disagreement and prolonged interventions were prominent as representatives of political parties and independent candidates balloted for positions on the 2024 presidential ballot paper. The exercise, which was supposed to take a few minutes, dragged due to accusations and counter-accusations over the transparency of the process. Because you are a presidential candidate has been going on campaign. They are uniform. And I'm picking on his behalf. They are and I cannot look at what I'm picking. So that you try to get it. Please, please, please. Please, who will put, put it in the bag? Please, who will put it in the bag? Keep them here. You come and then you pick what you want. Let me, let me, let me make a point. No, let me make a point. Please, please, please. Give me a second. No, 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 no. Flag bearer of the People's National Convention, PNC, Bernard Mona, says he will contest the Electoral Commission's decision to disqualify him from the 2024 presidential elections. Speaking to TV3, the flag bearer argued he will push until his name appears on the ballot sheet. I will not accept this kind of disrespect and we will not accept the fact that the Electoral Commission mm. does not want to play according to the rules. I notified my lawyer and they written to the Electoral Commission to find out how come that we have not written, we, we've not been written to. And so be assured that we will take up this matter to the end. Disqualified independent presidential candidate Janet Asananabla has launched an attack on the Electoral Commission describing the elections management body as incompetent. Janet, the only female among 11 disqualified as parents, said she was disqualified because the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jean Mensah, is jealous of her. I have been listening to people complain so much about the Electoral Commission. And because directly I wasn't affected, at times I helped them, at times I asked people to bring out evidence. But today, an injustice has just been committed by Electoral Commission to me. Electoral Commission to whom I sent my documents, have taken some of the documents and hid them. Do you know they gave some people five days to go and do corrections? They gave me two hours to make corrections. Whatever they have done was a plan and a calculated thing to remove me from the election. And you ask yourself, why will you do that to your colleague woman? Jealousy, that's what I've seen. Conveners of Democracy Hub have served notice to proceed with their scheduled protest against illegal mining despite the police acquisition of an ex parte injunction against the demonstration. The police and conveners of Democracy Hub are in a stalemate over routes and convergence of their protesters. We want to be clear. Our goal is not confrontation. We are organizing this demonstration to raise awareness about the urgent issue of illegal mining. Galam say and its devastating impact on our environment and communities. We are committed to conducting a peaceful, organized, and safe protest. 
Senior staff of the Volta River Authority, VRA, along with the members of the Public Services Workers Union, PSWU, of the Trades Union Congress, TUC, staged a protest at the VRA headquarters in Accra Friday afternoon. The protest is in opposition to a proposed merger between the VRA and We Power Authority. We are telling the Edo Nation and the world that VRA is as efficient as it is, very reliable and hardworking. And if you want to inject private partnership into it, come and come and negotiate with us. That one, we are cool. All that we are seeking to do is that they should withdraw the bill and let's sit down and talk well. more to come here it was a raucous the storm before the quiet but now we know who is placed where on the ballot order tonight we're going full throttle on that EC event in the last few hours. The ballot order choosing process is a major step in the electoral process, but this time was characterized by lots of disagreements. Nonetheless, it began with chairperson of the Electoral Commission announcing the aspirants who sail through uh, to become candidates in the 2024 presidential race. And out of the total of the 24 nominations received, the two committees tasked to review the forms and to make recommendations to the commission have cleared 13 candidates. And once again, I'd like to mention them. Mr. Ba Mahamadou Bawemia of the New Patriotic Party, Mr. John Dramani Mahama of the National Democratic Congress, Mr. Alan John Kojo Tremanting, an independent candidate, Mr. Christian Kwabena Andrews, Ghana Union Movement, Mr. Daniel Augustus Latte of the Ghana Great Consolidated People's Party, Mr. George Chumberima, an independent candidate, Mr. Nana Kwami Bedia, who an independent candidate, Mr. Hassan Ayarega, All People's Congress, Mr. Kofi Apalu of the Liberal Party, Ghana, Madam Ekwe Adonko, Ghana Freedom Party, Madam Akosia Frimpoma Kamankama, of the Convention People's Party, Mr. Mohamed Frepong of the National Democratic Party, and Mr. Kofi Kranting, an independent candidate. It is important to note, again, that all the presidential candidates were provided an opportunity to correct the errors on their nomination forms. Now, the ballot order exercise, which followed shortly after that, was filled with banters, rants, and the cacophony. The EC officials struggled to control the exercise, which was supposed to take a few minutes, but dragged out due to accusations and counter-accusations over the transparency of the process. Take a look. It's actually not giving anybody any advantage. When you put the opacity and you still look, then... Yeah, Nothing has been achieved. Because the reason why we are asking for opacity is that your eyes will not have an advantage of seeing any distinction difference. Go and fold them. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go and fold them. Yeah, no, hold on. Please, please. Will you allow me to just make okay. please, If you are watching international ballot talk, ordinary, your hand goes even into it. Without you, you all you do is to is to shuffle and pick one. You don't look. But the moment your eyes can see and there are differences, you will be able to look for the one you're looking for and pick it out. Yes. That's why we're asking for opacity. And, the, and, and what Dr. Yariga said about an independent person putting on is actually a, a, a good, a good, a good and a good arrangement as well. Yes. To ensure that since there is doubt at all over, let somebody who is complaining know not to be part of the other That's that helps. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
and you're calling for transparency. You are not. These drawn out interventions were prominent as representatives of political parties and independent candidates picked their spots on the 2024 presidential ballot paper. Uh, the NPP fending off any attempts that could make them lose the number one position. And I'll give you the, you know, the rest of the placements in the ballot order. But we also know that there have been uh, some kind of controversy as to how the NPP did it twice, choosing number one sport and also suspicions that, that could be uh, foul play in that process. Now, I'm going to bring in a bit more on that. But right now, I want you to see the placement order on the ballot paper. We know that the NPP is on the number one sport. Uh, if we could take a look at that now. Number two is the GCPP's Daniel Latte Jr., Equiadonko comes up third on the ballot order. Christian Kwabena Andrews, number four. Kofi Akpalu, number five. It goes on and on up until 13. So let's take a look at number six now. As far as, you know, the ballot order is concerned. From Kofi Akpalu, there is the NDP's Mohamed Frimpong. Number seven is Nana Kosia Frimponga Kumankuma of the CPP. The NDC's John Dramani Mahama comes up in the number eight spot. Hassan Ayariga of the APC, number nine. Kofi Kranting, an independent candidate, comes up at number 10. Uh, George Chum Berima Edu, also an independent candidate, comes up at number 11. And Nana Kwame Bediakum, another independent candidate, comes up at number 12. The last candidate on the list. At number 13, also an independent candidate, is Alan Kwejo Tremanting. And, and I, want to show you, I want to show you the list again because there's something uh, that I need to tell you about this. The process was in two parts. The political parties were first in picking the, the uh, uh, spots on the ballot paper. There were nine of them, and so there were nine uh, papers, papers numbered from one to nine, and then there were the independent candidates who followed uh, sep in a separate exercise choosing from 10 to 13. So there you have it on your list. Dr. Mohamed Baomia at number one. Daniel Latte of the GCPP at number two. Ekwia Donko at number three. Christian Kwabna Andrews at number four. Kofi Akpalu at number five. Number six is the NDP's Mohamed Frimpong. Number seven. Number seven is Nana Kosia from Poma Kumankuma of the CPP. John Dramani Mahama at number eight. And Hassan Ayariga, number nine. And then the independent candidates, Kofi Kranting at number 10. Number 11, George Chumberima. Nana Kwame Bediako comes up at number 12. And Alan John Kwejo Tremanting comes up at number 13. It's a packed show tonight. There's much more to come your way. I was telling you earlier about that controversy about how the NPP was able to pick number one twice in a row. Uh, it raised suspicions that there could be foul play, uh, but a reporter was there and saw it all. Uh, before I bring in my reporter, I want to show you the video that has raised a lot of sus suspicions. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> Show us. Show us. But you haven't seen it. 
Maybe now, this is the more that is the best. You have to compare it. Let me show you. I am saying it's not the same. Hello. Please pass it to Pass it to Why would you give it them? No, man, 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 well, what you just saw is, you know, when the banters began, the disagreements were raised about uh, one of the balls that seemed to have been marked. Uh, but I want to show you that video that has raised the biggest controversy about whether or not the MPP indeed Pick number one again. Number eight, LPG. Number nine, CPP. Okay. okay, please. You can now open your boss. You can now open your boss, please. MPP. MPP, let's please let's make progress so that we write it down. What did you? Let's make progress. What did you pick? Can you show it to the camera? New Patriotic Party, number one. MPP number one. Number one. This is me. Number one. Well, that A is enough to tell you the level of distress that was that filled the room at the Electoral Commission's headquarters. And if you look at that video, it would seem as though when the electro, electoral official had called that the balls be opened for the, you know, the papers in there to be inspected for which number uh, the political parties had picked, uh, Evans Nimakon, who is director of elections for the NPP, seemed to have turned towards Kofi Akpalu, took a paper from that corner and then presented that. And that is what many of you have said feels, uh, you know, the concerns about foul play in this. But our reporter is here. He wants to tell us a bit more about what happened. Noble Crosby Annan was right behind there. And, and Crosby, you were, you were standing right behind... Right behind uh, Evans Nimako, the MPP's mm -hmm. director of elections. Like you mentioned, uh, there was a, a lot of tension in the room, um, a cloud of distrust. I mean, you could... All the major parties, they were each sniffing allegations of fraud, mistrust going on. So I was interested in knowing what was exactly going on. So I took a position behind um, Evans Nimako, and when he was the first to pick the first round of ballots, so he means he had to pick the first ballot on the positioning. Mm -hmm. So when he picked it, he held it in his left hand. He came to sit down. He was still guarding it seriously. Uh, he eventually slowly opened it, and then I was behind him. So I saw when he was opening it, when he opened it, he passed the paper he took from the ball to uh, Mark Mendo, the former chairman of the party. And then that is when the paper, if you like, went to his left side. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at that video from a different that angle, angle mm -hmm. it looks as though he took the paper from uh, Mark Menu or Akpalu. But in essence, he was the one, after he saw the number, it was uh, number one in a red ink, kind mm -hmm. of. He was mm -hmm. the one who passed it to um, the Makmenu and then Kofi Akpalu. So when he was asked to show what number he got, that is how come he was, if you like, taking it from yeah. uh, behind him. Uh, that's what is uh, it funny, like. the allegations of picking or swapping the numbers and all of that. Mm, let's take a look at that video from the angle where our reporter stood. Number seven, NBC. Number 
You know, in a bit, we will hear uh, from the political parties after the entire event uh, when each of them knew where their candidates were placed on the ballot paper. But Crosby is still here with us. Crosby, mm. uh, beyond this, we know that the NDC had ra raised questions about, and not only the NDC, the APC too, had raised questions about the balls they were using right. and how transparent mm. they were. Talk to us about those. So it started when, for the first round of balloting, for uh, to determine the number of who picks what at what time. So the NDC decided to, they first wanted to examine uh, the balls that would be balloted with because they wanted to know uh, the weight of the balls and... I mean, examine, physically examine the balls. So the balls went round to the whole, uh, all the parties on the table. The NDC were the first to see. They held, you know, had a feel of the balls and all of that. Then it went to the other people. So after that, the NPP, because they were the first to submit or file the nominations, they were the first to pick, and then they picked number one. Mm -hmm. After all, the other candidates uh, picked various balls from the bowl. The NDC then said that they detected some um, anomaly, if you like, in the balls. They thought one ball was uh, was standing out and it was easy for whoever wanted to pick that ball to pick. And because the MPP was the first to pick, they decided to pick the ball. So the NDC began raising uh, questions about uh, that ball. We, we, we could play that video. But after that was the second round of the, of the balloting for the positions on the ballot paper. So it happened that the parties had to go through the balls again because the NDC had raised objections that that particular ball that they thought was mm -hmm. marked be removed from uh, the bowl where the balls would be kept. And right. they, the APC and the NDC as well as some other parties wanted something opaque so that they would not, or the, the parties would not be able to see through to identify a marked ball to pick it. So they thought that would increase the levels of transparency, but that was objected to strongly. Uh, by the NPP. Eventually, right. a, a, a poly thing bag was brought, a rubber bag was brought, the balls were put inside, and then uh, the parties began picking. First was the NPP because they were number one, mm. and then they picked. Of course, the NDC did not want the NPP to look into the, the poly thing bag, but mm. I mean, Nimako said he would, and then he did when he was picking, and so he saw Indeed. through, and then he picked the ball uh, when he came. That was the video we saw. We that saw. Was the I number see. One. Yeah. Crosby, I'm going to have to say thank you uh, for uh, staying up for mm. us. Yeah. Uh, Noble Crosby and uncovered that ballot order event at the Electoral Commission. Uh, we still have ahead on the program today the flag bearer of the People's National Convention, the PNC. Uh, he'll join us on one of the issues that you know, excuse me, took place at the Electoral Commission today. Uh, he's one of 10 candidates who were disqualified by the Electoral Commission. Um, he has rejected that position or decision by the Electoral Commission. We'll hear from him shortly. Uh, but right now, I want you to take a listen to the political parties post the ballot order exercise. Here's uh, Evans Nimako. Uh, from the NPP, who was thrilled that the party had, you know, picked number one. We also had the NDC on the other on the other hand. Uh, perhaps I'll show you that a little later. But how about we take a listen to chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jean Mensa, who announces uh, the nominees or aspirants uh, who couldn't make it, including my next guest, Mr. Bernard Nat Mona also had incomplete particulars of supporters. He also used registered voters in a particular district to support 
his, the nomination in other districts. He also, his form also contained varying signatures for the same supporters, and in some cases, the same signature for different supporters. The committee was of the view that he be disqualified. Oh, very well. You caught me there. Uh, but my guest is here. Bernard Mona is the flag bearer of the PNC. He's one of 10 candidates uh, who were disqualified in, you know, post the uh, filing of nominations by the Electoral Commission. He's vehemently rejected that position. Uh, earlier today, he had spoken to TV3. He said he's unsure why the end, you know, the Electoral Commission would do what it did. Right now, we've had some decision. I want to bring you in at this point. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us at this time. You've had the decisions now. Uh, the reason for the decisions, excuse me. What are your thoughts about that? <laughs> the Electoral Commission claimed that there were errors on my form. Indeed. So this is the Electoral Commission's own presidential nomination form. Mm -hmm. So just read. It says candidate's personal record. record. You can read one, two, three. Uh, two says voter ID number. Well, one says name. Two says voter ID number. It also has polling station on the um, right. And uh, three is supposed to be six. I think it went, you know, printing error. So we have six. Oh, so it's an error. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You got me. But I'm trying to get the no, point no, you no, are no. trying to make it, now. It's an error. Mm -hmm. Even on the EC presidential nomination forms. They, you said they wanted to write sex, mm -hmm. and they wrote what? Six. And so they can make errors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bernard, Bernard, I'm trying to understand the no, point here. No, try to understand what. The EC said that mm -hmm. there were errors on my form. Okay. Now, if you take all the other persons, all the other candidates, the EC indicated there were errors. They identified anomalies. They gave it to the people. They corrected them, and they admitted them. Mm -hmm. When it got to us... The EC started fumbling. Don't forget that I've been working with Jean Manson since 2003. Mm -hmm. So for 21 years, she has known my name. But you see the way she was fumbling to mention my name. Have you taken note of that? In addition to that, it was only us that Jean Manson failed to indicate whether they gave us the form with the anomalies and whether we corrected and returned him. Mm -hmm. All other persons, they said they corrected them. People who did not even have tax clearance certificates. They gave it to them to go and get back tax clearance certificates. Mm -hmm. We, you identified some errors, anomalies. You gave us the form on Saturday. We corrected them on Saturday. Return same to you on Saturday. How come that you cannot indicate there? Right, so what errors did the EC identify with your It has application? to be incomplete details of some of the supporters. Okay. And how did it happen? The forms are supposed to be filled in quadruplicates. And so you pick one form and you notice that all the information on a set of form is valid. Mm -hmm. On one form, a date is omitted. So we're asked to come and put the date. On another, you will see that the ID card was not copied. So all that we did was to look into the other form and copy the ID card number for you. And so we did. So all the corrections that the EC identified, we corrected and rightified them and, send them and, back to and them. returned them to the EC. And at 3.29 p.m. on Saturday, Samuel Kwao called me to acknowledge receipt of our corrected forms. Who is Samuel Kwao? Samuel Kwao is one of the persons working with the EC subcommittees. So he sent me the document and we corrected them. So if it is that people who have corrected their forms are admitted onto the ballot, then we could not have been disqualified. Is there a chance that the correction was not if done well? If the correction, assuming what you are saying is right, if mm -hmm. it was not done well, what was the EC supposed to do? To draw our attention, right? Mm -hmm. Ask them whether they did anything. So we corrected it on the 14th. And on the 20th, you come to tell me that you identified what errors. So if you identified errors, then it is the making of the Electoral Commission because any and every error you identified on the form and you gave to us, 
in less than four hours, we rectify those errors mm. and we return the form to you. But I'm saying that you just read this. This is page 137. Mm -hmm. If you go to page 138, Vice Presidential Quorum, the same error has been repeated. Uh, so the EC can make errors even on their own presidential nomination form. And I'm sure that CV3 has these forms. Mm. So go to page 137. You can realize that if it is about errors being made, as we speak, the EC has not given us a final register. You know that precedence over the period means that we only take nominations of candidates when there is a final register. Do we blame the EC right. for all these things? I am saying that the EC had grossly in disqualifying us. Mm -hmm. They gave us just as they gave other candidates. And I listened to the Electoral Commission chairpersons this evening. Mm -hmm. Clearly, when every candidate they listed, they identified these errors. The person was given the chance. They corrected them. When he got to us, he on, she only said that they, these are the errors. Mm. And then the committee decided and that they should disqualify. That, just take a, a, I, I would want my producer to put that together again. Uh, and just and watch we'll take, whether we'll they said a, that we corrected our form and returned it. Indeed. Indeed. But what, what interest will the Electoral Commission have to disqualify you? I have no idea whether it is because I have said openly and strongly that every Ghanaian will be born into wealth and not debt. And that proceeds from cocoa, from gold, from oil, will trickle directly into the bank accounts of every Ghanaian that is born. If this is what Jean Mensa doesn't want her children to enjoy, I'm sorry, but they will enjoy it. If it is the case that I'm speaking about using our own local or Ghanaian languages to become the subject of study, using tree and Hausa, is that somebody doesn't want? I cannot help you. But I know that I'll become president that will ensure that no Ghanaian is born into poverty. What, what you tell me now seems as though you think the Electoral Commission intentionally disqualified you. If it is not intentional, if they are claiming that there are errors, did you read what you read it again so that people I, I, will know? I did. What did you read? I, I did. Did you but, read sex or you read, you read sex? <laughs> I want us to take a listen to the electoral commissioner again. Yes, particularly about take the mm -hmm. people that they qualified right. and come to take what she said about me. Uh, let's take a listen. I think this is a longer version of the announcement. Let's take a listen. We'll come back into the studio. Mr. Bernard Nad Mona also had incomplete particular supporters. He also used registered voters in a particular district to support his, the nomination in other districts. He also, his form also contained varying signatures for the same supporters, and in some cases, the same signature for different supporters. The committee was of the view that he be disqualified. That I should be disqualified. Did well, they what? give us the chance to correct the anomalies? No, but you said they gave you the chance. So to did we the correct them? Because in the other people, she would tell you that they gave them a chance, but they didn't. And they either failed, or those that were able to correct the anomalies identified by the electoral commission, you decided to qualify them. Indeed. In our case, just listen, blatantly silent she on whether we corrected it or not. Indeed. And, and you have also addressed, she mentioned three things. You've addressed one of them. I, won't, I want you to address the other two. Which one? Uh, apart from the errors uh, that they say you, you, you were there uh, in the incomplete, uh, you know, forms case. She also says that uh, it would appear that you had used the uh, voters or uh, you know, uh, same signatures in one of the cases, and then people in one district who had endorsed you in a separate district. Kimani. That sounds fraudulent. This is the Electoral Commission letter on the 13th of September mm -hmm. to us, and it will be, do you, you and your viewers good if you read it in total. It says, I bring you greetings from uh, the Presidential Nomination Committee and trust that this letter finds you well. The Nomination Committee has dis detected the underlisted anomalies with your nomination forms. One, incomplete particulars of supporters in pages 9, 10, 37, 39, 42, 46, 
50. And it would appear that that is the only so those anomaly. So the anomalies the Electoral Commission identified and captured in a letter written to us. Mm. So what that, perhaps I should finish it so our viewers yeah. will get so, the... So, so whatever the it, Electoral Commission it, is saying it today is to other say, imported information that they are bringing, it, which is not captured yes. on the anomalies they no, sent No, hang on. Us. So it says, uh, that is what they outlined. But it also says that meanwhile the Commission is contacting your supporters to verify the authenticity of their consent to your nomination form. You are required to come for your nomination forms 13 September 2024 and effect the needed corrections and resubmit by 2 p.m. on Saturday 14 September 2024. We wish you well. So clearly, going by this letter, <laughs> the Electoral Commission, uh, the anomalies Jean Mensa mentioned were not told so, to you. Uh, so so you I am a witch or I am a magician? <laughs> I can't answer that. So, so therefore, these are the anomalies the Electoral Commission identified and pointed. We rectified them in accordance with what they gave us. If you went and identified any other errors, prudency will require that you inform us. Mm -hmm. If you fail to do that, then it is the Electoral Commission that is rather an anomalous institution. So, so now that your situation is the way it is, tell us what you plan to do about oh, it. Oh, our lawyers wrote to them this morning. Okay. First, when we got that other presidential candidates had received information to come for balloting, our lawyers wrote to them, requesting that we did this, you wrote to us, we did the corrections, and there is a letter from us to you that we did the corrections and we've resubmitted. You didn't give us any letter. Mm -hmm. When our lawyer's letter went, and we came back. Then Asante Kisi, at 1.17 p.m. today. Who is Asante Kisi? He works at the Electoral Commission. Okay. He then sent me something and called me to tell me that he has sent me a note. I said, I've seen it. But Kisi, this thing that you are doing, you yourself as a mature person, if I go out and I'm talking about this, will you be happy? Didn't we correct the anomalies that you stated that they are here? Mm -hmm. He said, Bernard, this is coming from the commission. Please spare me. I will get back to you, Madam is talking. And that was the end. Kissy never got back to mm. me. But clearly, even those who send the letter, they realize that no. You said we should correct anomalies. We have corrected them. So your letter of regret cannot be referencing the same anomalies mm. that we have corrected. Indeed. So essentially, what Jean Mensa, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, announced today, it's not what they told It them. is totally at variance with what they told us to correct. Mm. I see. So I don't know what pressure is on Jean Mensa to do what she's doing. But I can tell you that with my blood and with every strength on my part, we will fight this mm. to get the PNC on the ballot. The people of Ghana will get the president they want. Mm. And that president is Bernard Mona. I see. Would, it, would this be in spite of uh, what well, my producer says I should end it? So we'll end our conversation here. Thank you so much, uh, Bernard, for joining us today. Uh, Bernard Mona is the flag bearer of the PNC. He says that... He will contest his disqualification uh, because of the discrepancy in what the Electoral Commission had told him via a correspondence and, uh, you know, what the Electoral Commission announced today. It would appear he was not given the opportunity oh, to but correct But you yourself identified the... errors on the Electoral Commission presidential form. No, I, the reason I would say it would appear because I have to do my job. No, as a but journalist. I just gave you the presidential form. That is no, the is that, that form is what that you, I completed. That is what you have given. That me. is the form. Just but I check. haven't authenticated it. But you have seen this. But one. I have seen what you and have. And that given they me. wanted to write sex, and they wrote sex, <laughs> and it's an error in your opinion. They are granted to make errors. <laughs> this this conversation goes on and on. Uh, the electoral commission has some questions to answer. We'll follow this story closely and bring you more in subsequent broadcasts. But right now, I want you to listen to the independent candidates who also raised very key concerns about the conduct of the exercise. Let's start off with Nana Kwame Bidiako, uh, the leader of New Force Movement. An amount of work and process to be able to be qualified. Now, once we're qualified, you cannot put some aside and deal with some first and deal with some later. You cannot tell us that the last four who are independent would now choose out of nine to 13. And if that's what the law is, I'd like the media to know that from now, the country will prepare for that, that any time we will walk into this place and we are independent candidates, then we're second class citizens. Thank you. We, we are not seeing... 
We have structures enough to no, qualify. No, no, no. You have no place to speak. We cannot allow any independent candidates to Please, we need to have your results. Please, we are making progress yesterday. Please, please, let's move. So I think there was, there was a final explanation about the political parties. Assuming two parties don't contest the presidential three, and they are also in the constituencies. So there you have it. Nana Kwame Bediakon was not the only one who made uh, or raised concerns about how uh, the exercise was being conducted uh, without any priority for the independent candidates. Uh, we know that the representative of uh, Alan Kujo Tramanting, who on the ballot paper is uh, considered an independent uh, candidate, Yabuabe Asamwa, also raised the same questions about why it would appear the political parties were being prioritized over the independent candidates. And that's where we want to take this conversation to now. Whether or not it's time we took a second look at how the ballot order exercise goes. Professor Ali Dusedu is a political scientist. Uh, he is the head of the political department at the University of Ghana. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here, Prof. Prof, before we get into the focus of our you know, conversation, how about you tell us your thoughts about how the exercise was conducted generally? Okay, thank you so much. Good evening to your viewers. I, I think uh, it, it is a ceremony thing they do every four years when we are going to vote. But definitely, as competitive as it is, there will definitely be instances where either political, a political party or a candidate or the representative of a political party or candidate may not be happy with the process. And you saw what happened today. There were a lot of protests. Even, I think, at the initial decision to allow candidates to select the order that they will even select the slots that they're going to be placed. There were a lot of concerns that people raised about how to, and then he didn't generate into a heated argument. That was the first part. But cool has prevailed, and then they continue with the process. And when they were, I think when they announced how it was going to be, the other candidates who said the independent contesting candidates were not also happy. So I think Yes, people would definitely express uh, reservations, but the good thing was that it went well and peaceful, and everybody has accepted the slots that they have been placed on. Mm, I see. I, I do want to look at uh, a few issues that were raised there. Looking at the conduct of the Electoral Commission, uh, did you get the impression that uh, this was properly planned and rolled out? Yeah, I think it was part of their initial political activities for, for the year. And they had, I think they shared it earlier on. They did that, they open nomination forms. They did that people, political parties are supposed to submit their nomination forms. They did that, they will finish the voting and then the people will pick their slots. So it is part of the electoral calendar, which they had released earlier. And that meant that they had planned for it, and all preparations were made towards it. So what happened today could have just been an outlier case that they didn't plan for, or maybe it could just be part of the tradition that people believe must be contested. Mm, I see. Finally, let's look at the independent candidates. Uh, they had to come second to the prior uh, to uh, the political parties. They felt they felt peeved about that. Uh, do they have justification? One, I think I'm not sure there is a law in the country that says that when you are going to do the balloting, political parties must come first before uh, parliament. Uh, sorry before independent candidates. The law allows both independent candidates and political parties to contest and run for both the presidential ticket but also the parliamentary ticket. So I'm not sure I stand to be corrected that there's a law that says that the independent candidates must come after the, the presidential uh, political parties. But I also believe that it has become an established norm that has been done over the years. And, and there have been little protests or contests from the independent political party. So it continued. 
But I also believe that it could have a little bit of historical antecedent. If you look at the rule of independent political, independent candidates, especially at the, at the presidential level, they have been very minimal in the growth of our elections. If you look at the decolonization elections, that happened roughly between 1945 uh, moving forward. We had majority of them contesting, majority of individuals contesting as independent candidates. Then when you move a little bit beyond the 45, the 2000, that is the competitive year. So you move beyond the decolonization elections and you look at the transitional elections. You still had a lot of independent people contesting, but more for the parliamentary candidate than for the for the presidency. Mm. But when you look at our consolidation period now, there are a lot of independent candidates coming in stronger again, especially at the presidential level, because a lot of voters in African countries are now becoming fed up with the rule of political parties development, even though they vote for them every year. So people now think that they could court the support of disillusioned citizens who are fed up with political parties and be able to lead. So because there was a period that very little independent contested at the presidential level, so maybe the the, the selection of the mm. laws were largely political parties. And very well. It, so I, I think basically it has to do with that element of historical Indeed. evolution. But by and large, I think what independent political parties can do now is to contest that norm, that established norm, and see whether there could be a law to either enforce it or to open up the space for them to be back to, for both political, sorry, for both political parties and independents to ballot at the same time without due regards to the parties coming earlier before them. Mm, very well, Prof. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much. Professor Ali Dusedu is a political scientist. He is also head of the political science department of the University of Ghana. Uh, you're still live here on Ghana tonight. Remember, we are your election command uh, center. I want us to hear from the political parties after their placement. But before then, I want you to meet someone we'll be talking to in a tad. Hassan Ayariga is the leader and flag bearer of the All People's Congress, APC. He plays nine on the ballot paper. Uh, good evening, uh, sir. I hope you're having a great evening so far. Good evening to you and uh, good evening to your viewers. Mm, yes, was... I'm having a good evening. Uh, it's my daughter's birthday. So after the program, we are out having dinner. It looks like looks like it's a it's a double celebration uh, tonight. You sail through in the presidential, uh, you know, in the, in the presidential race as far as the ballot order is concerned, and your daughter's birthday. On the other hand, I was hoping we could catch it. Yes, there you are. Uh, we can see you now. We are happy that you could join us. But how about we hold you on just for a tad? Uh, let's take a listen to some of the you know the political parties represented at the. Uh, ballot order exercise today at the Electoral Commission. And then, well, my producer says that we could, I, what I wanted to do was take a quick break and come back, but he says that we can have our conversation. So let's go on. Are you happy where you play? It's number nine. Um, that's a striker. If you are playing a game like football match and you are put uh, in the ninth position, what it means is that you are to be scoring the goals. And if you are number one, that means that you are the goalkeeper. So you have to be ready for the striker. So MPP is placed number one because they are the goalkeeper. They are the government in power. And I'm number nine. I'm the striker. So it's going to be between the striker and the goalkeeper. What is going to happen? If I get the balls from number eight, number seven, number six, I'm sure... Wonders will happen in 2024 general elections. Okay. So I'm happy with my position number nine, born for September, number nine, month of September for the uh, qualifications, number nine for balloting, the same September nine. So you can imagine what nine means to me. It means a lot. Mm. And I'm happy with that number. I see. Uh, but you were in there, and this is not your first rodeo with the presidential race in this country. Uh, what did you think about yes. the exercise today? Um, the exercise was a bit 
uh, hectic. That's number one. Uh, people were not sure of it being transparent and uh, it being um, credible. And then so there was a banter between the NDC uh, representatives and the MPP representatives of the issue why the MPP should look at their balls before picking. And then so there was one ball that was in there that was different. It had some whitish uh, line around it, and that ball was totally different. So when the NDC Fifi quoted general secretary picked it out and said that he wasn't sure of this ball, and it looks funny. So we all agreed that, okay, in that case, let, the, let them remove the ball. Then he was still debating on the fact that he's not 100% sure that this ball is correct. So they should just remove everything and change. So I said, okay, in that case, what do we need to do with that? Look, there are two options. Option number one is we change all the balls and bring in new balls. Or option number two, we get an independent person, maybe the media or any other person, then to wrap the page, the papers, and then put them in the ball. Because when you look at the balls, they had some names to them, day, night, uh, visibility, something, something, so many names. I looked at it and I looked, I said, no, no, no. That cannot be uh, a transparent way of uh, having these balls with names. So in a nutshell, I was of the view that let somebody else pull the papers the ballot papers and put them in the ball instead of the EC doing that. Mm. And that also went well with all of them. But then, still, they said, okay, what they want is that they should put them in a dark rubber bag so that everybody who comes will put his hand in there and just right. pick. Right. So, so when tell they did that, they put it in a transparent rubber bag. I see. So, so tell me this. Uh, while right. all right. of these things were going on, uh, what was going on in your own head as to why a nation as this is going through the process and it, it is, is this, um, for lack of a better word, uh, very uh, primary, if you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, for me, I really don't, I'm not worried, worried about which number I pick or which number others do. What is important is that let's pick these numbers and then go and campaign. That's the most important thing. If people want to vote for Hassan Erga, they will look for his, his face among the 13, uh, what do you call it, candidates, and pick his face and vote for him. But people believe that these numbers play an important role. I don't know, something is a spiritual way, something is, uh, some people think it favors when you pick number one or when you pick the last number. For me, if I want to put them into context, mm. I think that, I think that just let's, we should just pick the numbers if it is transparent. They should roll them, not put them in the ball. Just put them down. Just wrap them like some gum. Just squeeze them and then put them down. Everybody should come and pick. And funny enough, I didn't like the idea of picking the ball and holding it and then wait until everybody is done before you open it. That was, that was something Very I well. did not agree with because some people can swap it. They can swap it. I can swap mine with any other person. Do you right. what I'm we, we're going to have to take a break you now, but do, your... do you think the process was rigged? <laughs> I think that uh, there was some funny play, but let it go. Very well. We'll leave it here. Thank you so much. Asana Yariga Thank is the too. leader and flag bearer of the APC, taking us into a quick break. When we come back, why does the placement number matter? That's what we are looking at now. Number one, number two, number eight, number 13. Why does it matter at all? This is Ghana Tonight. We'll be right back. You're watching uh, Ghana Tonight. Uh, we are your election command center. It's 77 days to the elections and it's, it's been a big night for the Electoral Commission as they announced 13 out of the 24 aspirants who filed have sales through onto the ballot paper today we know who places where the question we've been asking is oh, can we can we move or that's it for today well it would appear that's all we can do today but i did want to go in a bit into where where each candidate is placed and what it means but that conversation will continue tomorrow at 7 a.m with alfred okansi and the team uh, his team of panelists uh, who come on here 
for key points. It starts 7 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, do make a date. And then also join me sa Sunday at 2 p.m. when I bring you that conversation with Haruna Idrisu, former minority leader and Tamale South MP. Riverton conversation. Don't miss that uh, on Sunday at 2 p.m. In the meantime, you have yourself a pleasant weekend. I'm Kemeni Amano. Good night.